good. We got audio. We're good. Everyone's levels are good. All right. All my check is done. Here we go in three, two, one. I stand here in this place, in this moment, not because I wish to, but because I have to. A result of action and consequence. Welcome, one and all, to The Instance. This is The Instance, episode 646. It is August 13th, 2021. I'm Scott Johnson. As always, joined by Garrett Wines. Earl Garrett, welcome. Hi, Scott. Hey, man. What are you, how are you? What are you doing there? How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. How far down this rabbit hole do you want to go? Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the oldest chihuahua was very hard to get out of bed this morning. It's yeah. warm in Florida. I really need to mow my lawn. Uh, it's kind of bad. Yeah. I didn't know you guys mowed them down there. Isn't it just jungle weed and you just sort of let it do whatever it's going to do? And Oh, God, if we did, it'd be Jumanji. What are you talking about, uh, dude? No, I need to mow every weekend in the rainy season. It's that, bad. That's a good point. Uh, well, I'm really excited to, to, to make the following announcement, that our good pal and fellow podcaster, co-host of the Gamers Inn, and of course, the Angry Chicken, Jocelyn Moffat joins us. Oh, actually, you've got a new name now. Do you still do the Moffat thing? I do. Thing? Oh uh, no! I'm, I'm Carney now. <laughs> you know it's hard for me to remember, forget or remember because I've known you for so long. You've just always been Moffat. So I'm just going to say Joss plays. How about that? Jocelyn is That's here. Fine too. <laughs> yeah, Jocelyn is here. Hi, uh, it's so good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be here. And don't worry about the name thing. Garrett got it wrong for like a year and a half before he finally stopped <laughs> yeah. messing it up. It took a long time. <laughs> yeah, it takes a really long time. I apologize. No, it's all good. For ever making a change like that. It's all um, on me. It's uh, totally how dare fun. you decide to change yeah. your name? Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things, though. It's uh, certainly here in the States. It's uh, definitely a tax benefit to change one's name once the marriage happens. <laughs> But uh, it's easy to, to not remember. Like my daughter, Taylor, her last name's Straw now. I don't think of that ever, ever. <laughs> like, ever. Someone will say, who's your daughter? Oh, that's Taylor Johnson. She's like, Dad, I go by Straw now. I'm like, gosh, dang it. I don't remember. This stuff. <laughs> I love that you introduce your children by their full name as yeah. opposed to just their <laughs> just, first name and everyone yeah. assuming the last name because they're your offspring. That's right. Well, I do I do what I can when I can, and often it's not correct. But uh <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're, we're glad to be here, everybody. Welcome to The Instance. And um, uh, it's going to be a really interesting show today, I think. I did want to at least give some props early on, though, to the amazing work that you guys do on The Angry Chicken. Uh, easily the the most prominent in anyone's mind uh, show about Hearthstone or focused on Hearthstone. And I know with all this Blizzard stuff going on, you guys have you know had your own challenges over there that uh, the podcasting world around Blizzard games has had. And I think you've handled it really well and great and and I just wanted to say that publicly because I haven't really told you privately, but I think the Angry Chicken did a did a bang up job, if my opinion matters at all in this. <laughs> well, thanks well, a lot for saying that. Obviously, it's it's been a, a rough. Well, I mean, for Hearthstone, this has been a rough like eighteen months or more. So <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. I I mean, I just thought you guys did a really good job. In fact, I wanted. To, I generally speaking, I think the community on the whole has done a pretty good job. You know, I mean, I don't want to I'm spend all day patting ourselves on the back, but I think everybody tried real hard to do good and and to to talk around this stuff the best they could and and to hit the the, the right issues and, and learn from it. And, you know, all of that stuff, which reminds me uh, right now, it's still happening. We haven't had a show, so I haven't had a chance to tell you on the air. But the charity uh, featuring the broken hearthstone art that I did uh, is up. I mentioned on the last episode of this show that that was coming. That happened since we last spoke, and uh, it's available now in forms such as stickers, uh, t-shirts, uh, buttons, and I forgot the other thing. There's one other thing. Uh, oh, a print, of course, a uh, full-size print of this thing. But basically, it's uh, it's called the No Way Home print or button, sticker, shirt, whatever. Uh, they're available for uh, people to grab and get from the store right now. 100% of the profits go to one of the following, uh, or more, I guess, if you... I, I, you know, if you wanted to do three things, you could have it go to all three charities. But you can choose what charity you want your contribution to go to. So, for example, uh, you may want to send it to Black Girls Code. It's an awesome uh, organization. Rain is another one, which deals with sexual violence, assault, and other issues facing women in the workplace and otherwise. And Women in Games International, another fine organization. They're linked on all three for the uh, for each of the the listings, so you can click and learn more and kind of find out maybe where you want. Uh, 
your ver- or your uh, portion of that to go. Um, anyway, the they're selling like crazy. The shirts are the hot ones, apparently. That that turned out to be the thing people most wanted. Um, but if you want to learn more, go check it out, frogpants.com slash store. Again, 100%, every dime, every penny of the profits on these things uh, go to these charities. And right now, I'm happy to say all three are kind of evenly spaced, so everybody seems to to have a favorite and uh they're all getting kind of a, just a, a, a third of it so anyway we don't know how long we're going to run this probably a little while longer i want to make sure people get a chance if they haven't heard of it um <clears throat> so go and take my you know my cathartic art attempt to deal with this in my own way and then an attempt to maybe roll that into something good and make a difference uh let's see if we can't do even a bigger difference so go check it out frogpants.com slash store and they're the first listings you'll see there so you can i ordered more. two buttons oh you did did you yeah nice. well look good on you one for each nipple or what's the plan there what are you gonna do <laughs> that is the plan yeah okay yeah you i don't know how you knew that i'm uh you know <laughs> that's a little personal but yeah well if yeah. it was one for each nipple then why didn't you get three just kidding he doesn't have three nipples <laughs> i made that up that's a that's a terrible thing to say about your good friend Anyway, <clears throat> we're here. We're doing it. We got it going on. Um, I do want to say I've made a great sacrifice in the last couple of weeks, and then I would just like to share it for the show. All right, I played a completely ununderstandable Chinese MMO called Swords of Legends. Okay, got to level thirty-eight, almost forty. Uh, I really like it, but I have no idea what's going on because the translation's terrible. So there's number one. That's sacrifice number one. I did this for the people. Is it, that almost sounds like a feature, though. I could see <laughs> playing a very bad translation as endlessly entertaining. It kind of is. It's ridiculously entertaining in a, in a weird way. And they and the voice work is horrendous. And even then, I don't know what they're saying. It's just incomprehensible. <laughs> but it's it's also mechanically and kind of like, I don't know tonally and progression wise is actually a pretty fun game and the end game supposed to be really good so i'm still still poking in there but sacrifice a little time in there i also made a ninja in black desert online all right just to kind of see what's going on in there and it's what do you think it is very pretty lots of grinding it's whatever it is and also slightly incomprehensible story-wise a uh, brand new game was released this week last week a, a korean mmo called blessed unleashed i guess it's based on some property called blessed which i don't know anything about uh downloaded it installed it a little more action oriented it's okay again don't really know what's going on there's wizards you know and guys with swords i know that you you don't say there's wizards in an mmo yeah weird right (laughs) and then i reinstalled guild wars 2 i've been playing that a little bit uh and a little bit of final fantasy 14 because i wanted to uh, there's there's a whole story behind that we'll get to in a, a future episode but Uh, All of that. But then also Elder Scrolls Online, which I play pretty consistently and have for years. So I guess what I'm saying is I went down a bit of a hole and I did it for the for the I think I did it for the show, or at least that's how I'm justifying it. So so there could you guys ever see Jocelyn, have you ever done that where you're like, I'm going to go down a weird rabbit hole and play every version of this I can find and you just kind of get obsessed with it? Or is just is this a me problem? Well, I mean, I think it might be a you problem. (laughs) I mean, like, I've definitely tried out a whole bunch of different things. Like, right now, I'm really into, like, simulation city builders. Like, I'm I'm playing every single one I can find on Steam. And some of them are really bad. And some of them are outright, like, offensive. Mm. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I know. Garrett's making faces at me. But I'm telling you, like, some of the the, things... The buildings spell out insults to your mother? Like, how... (laughs) They're, like, trying to, um, like, do the whole post-apocalyptic thing and, like what Frostpunk did with like the laws and like making hard and weird choices, except for they're applying it to current social issues. And you're just like, no, no, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, no, yeah, no, don't do that's, that. That's, that's dangerous. Yeah, it's bad. Have you Some played, of them are bad. <laughs> have you played, um, have you played new world or old world? Sorry, not new world, the MMO, but old world, the, <laughs> the four X city builder game. Have you played that? I haven't yet. It's on my list. It's really good. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love done... City Builders, and I haven't played like a new one in forever. I just like recently replayed the Jurassic Park Park Builder. Oh, Ooh, yeah. that evolution. Yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for the sequel. I'm I'm very very ready for it. Yeah, that was a great game, and I I did this exact. Oh, this is hilarious. I did this exact same thing maybe two months ago, where I went and got them all. Every 4X game I could find, every city builder. I played Nebuchadnezzar again. I played uh, that Warhammer 40K Gladius, I think, Gladius, whatever it's called, which is like, you know, take civilization and remove everything but combat, and that's basically that game. And I, tr- and I just couldn't stop. And then I talked about them on a show, you know, basically barfed it all up on a show, and then I was like, I don't need to play another city builder for like a year. I'm good. <laughs> So I don't well, know have what... you tried Imagine Earth? Because Imagine Earth is my current jam. <laughs> no, but I keep hearing it's cool. You're the yeah, fourth it's person really to good. tell me that. Oh, I'm going to have to get it. <laughs> oh, this We're... looks cool. It's supposed to yeah. be cool. Though. <laughs> I have not played this. The hang-up I had is, well, maybe you can tell me if it should be a hang-up or not, but the way the people's mouths uh, move freaked me out. Oh, man, the voiceover is, like, weird. <laughs> yeah, weird yeah it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Who listens to... City builders, that that's like prime podcast listening time for me. Just, I'm a I'm a tinker away at my 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 little mini city and I'm gonna catch up on podcasts. Yeah. Well I'll, imagine Earth I'll seems to what anyone's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad actually my biggest complaint about ESO is I can't play, po- I can't listen to anything while I play it because the whole damn thing is voiceover and it's actually really well done. Oh it's yeah, so well done. <laughs> we got to talk about that today because that's actually a big mm-hmm. part of what they do to separate themselves. And in some ways, I think it stops some players who are used to the kind of wow, I need to be distracted, I can watch Futurama while I play a video game kind of people. <laughs> um, and I'm one of those. Pe- I love that. I love a game where I can kind of passively play it. And then have something else going on. I don't know what that says about us as a people, but but I do like that. And this game, this game wants you to listen and pay attention. And I would actually argue Final Fantasy XIV does the same thing. That story is kind of everything to that game. And if you're not paying attention, you just feel like you're going through the motions and you got to get out of there. So we'll get into all that stuff. In fact, let's do it now. Why not? Today we're going to talk about ESO. We're going to take a big deep dive. And we'd like you to come with us. So to start us off, I'm going to play some dialogue that uh, came from the game. And uh, this was a scene I actually played through myself and liked so much that I just really liked it. I played a little bit at the intro. I'll play a little more now. And this will just give you a taste of, I guess, the quality they achieve with their storytelling, their VO work. Um, and some some would say it's a little stunty because they, they do hire like really well-known people People like John uh, John Cleese plays a very notable character and is a bit of a comic relief for the game. Um, Alfred Molina plays one of my favorite characters in the game. Uh, Bill Nye, uh, dude who played Ruse Bolton in uh, Game of Thrones, plays a fantastic character. Um, Peter Stormare. All, I'm, 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 it's an amazing cast, and it really does draw you in um, when you're playing it. But anyway, here's just a taste of my one of my favorite interactions. Do you like this place? It took me the better part of a decade to perfect it. Every stone and flower tells a story. Tales of how things were. How they ought to be. I thought about destroying it on more than one occasion. I'm glad I didn't. I mean, tell me that isn't cool, man. How cool is that? It's like, I'm like goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew Jocelyn would jive on this because we've talked about this before. The game has a way of like dragging you in tonally and and, and atmospherically uh, that other MMOs just don't do. Other MMOs are either saying, well, read this text as the as the interaction between you and the NPC or whatever it happens to be. Um, Or sometimes it's voiced, but oftentimes you're running around and it feels disjointed and disconnected or whatever. And it just doesn't have heft to it. And. I would I would argue that this game, while you know a bit like previous Elder Scrolls games, when you have conversations with NPCs or other characters, it's still sort of a you know a talking head, and there's not a lot of interactivity going on. But it's definitely a step above how things looked in Oblivion and, and Skyrim and other games previous to that. Um, and the voice acting is never bad. Even the names that you don't know, like these non-actors, are all professionals. Like, uh, you know, Liam O'Brien, the entire cast of uh, Critical Role is in this thing. 
Every major voice actor you've ever heard from is there. I ran around with uh, uh, female Captain Shepard. What's her name? Um, well, I can't think of the voice actor. She's amazing. Can't think of her name. Uh, I don't know her name offhand. I cannot help you. Ah, all I can think of is Rex going, Shepard, Shepard. <laughs> oh, Jennifer Hale. I know, Jennifer normally Hale. I'm like on it. Jennifer Hale. <laughs> Jennifer Hale. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Oh, my God. She, she, <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer she, Hale. Uh, she plays a main character, a, a Nord uh, warrior, uh, and she's awesome. Oh, my gosh. She's so good. And you just get sucked so hard into these stories that it's one of the things that makes it special. But let's get to the basics of it. We'll, we'll talk about what we like, what we don't, what we think they could do better. And for some of us, like Garrett, Garrett feels like he's sort of just scratched the the surface of the thing. I've spent a ton of time in it, especially recently. And I'm here to say I think that this game can appeal to both those just starting to peek in and get their feet wet. And I think veterans are finding a lot to do as well. Um, the game has its problems. It's not perfect. It certainly had bigger problems in the past and has rectified a lot of that. But we'll get into all that in a second. So let me start off with uh, some brief description stuff. There are four big games right now in the MMO space, I would argue. It's WoW, it's Final Fantasy XIV, it's Guild Wars 2, it's Elder Scrolls Online. There's lots of different smaller ones, different niches, different stuff. I mentioned a bunch I played uh, before uh, we started into this topic. There you know, a lot of MMOs out there, and we're not even getting into how much stuff is on mobile and is available in other you know, formats and stuff. So it's just the market is awash with things right now. Uh ESO in particular is one that's been here and with us since April of 2014. It came out on PC and Mac first. A lot of people think it simultaneously happened on consoles. That did not happen until 2015. Um, but here's what they did. Uh, Zenimax Online Studios is the developer. It was published by Bethesda and uh, was shown, um, or I'm sorry, I guess it was, yeah, it was, tw- it was 2014, right? I have that right in my head. I hope I wrote that down right. Anyway. It was like, longer ago than I'd like to think that it was. Yeah, 2014. <laughs> doesn't that feel like two minutes ago, but also 100 years ago? I don't like it. I don't like how it feels. Time. Time sucks. It was early 2014, too. Damn, April. Yeah, April, right? Um, anyway, it was uh, originally a mandatory monthly fee style game, like World of Warcraft, like a lot of MMOs at the time. And then it transitioned from that a year later or so, March 2015, to a buy-to-play model with microtransactions, optional subscription, um, lots of you know cosmetics, a store, and all that stuff. So they, they very quickly got off of the, um, we're not making it here as a sub, so if it took us seven years to make this game, we should probably figure out a way to make this work. So they did. Uh, the game was then renamed The Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited. This is when the game really mattered to me because this was not only when they moved it to consoles uh, and kind of got a broader base for the game, but this is when they said, look, the whole world scales with you. Uh, Some people don't like this. We'll get to that in a minute. But the game basically flattened the world so that you could go anywhere at any level at any time and participate in any content you wanted to. And to some that may sound like, well, if everything's possible, then nothing's possible. You know, or is, is, is it too much? Like, whatever what what the main difference was is instead of you creeping up to a zone that you were under leveled for and getting annihilated on the border you just now sort of blend into everything and if you get tired of a zone or a a place and you're like i want to go somewhere else i want some different story you can just freaking go there and do it you get into get into one of the shrines and you can teleport across the the land and go to someplace else and start some other thing and that includes like brand new content you can do a level one and play the latest expansion story and content through level, you know, however far you get, level 10, level 12, whatever it is, and that's your first zone. And then you could then leave there and go back to the first vanilla zone that came out in 2014, and that could be the second thing you do, uh, and everything in between. So to me, that was a big deal. To me, that opened the game up in a way that made it possible for me to really get into it and not, uh, and for whatever reason, not feel like I was, I don't know, stuck in the same old rut with every other MMO that I'd played up to that point. Um, anyway, the game sold somewhere in the 15 million copies by 2020. Uh, that's a lot. We don't know what the monthly active users are. Uh, my guess is it's somewhere in the millions, but no one no one ever reports these numbers anymore, so nobody knows. Uh, here are some other basics. The races. Humans are the Nords, the Red Guards, the Bretons, and the Imperials. The Elvish races include the Dunner, or the Dark Elves, the Al- Altmer, rather, the High Elves, which is my favorite 
uh, race to play. I like their bonuses. Yeah, me too. Oh, do you? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I always play a high elf. <laughs> what is it about high elves do you like? I don't know. They're just pretty. Yeah, they're <laughs> I like cool, being right? pretty. I play a blood elf too. Come on. Like. Yeah, good point. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're not, I mean, yes, they look good. And I think the other two elves are kind of gnarly looking. They just look, I don't know, they're nasty, right? It's listen, <laughs> listen, don't you, you watch your mouth about what else. What else are okay. <laughs> they're okay. And they're good with bows and I'll give them, you know, credit where it's deserved. But uh, something about the high elves, I don't know if it's just because they're so regal looking or. Well, I think it's their armor too. Their uh, armor is very like Lord of the Ringsy in my head. Yeah. And I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. So yeah. And if when I think of like Lord of the Rings elvish, like yeah. I think high elves and, and that always draws me in. Totally agree. It's a, it's also, if you're going to do the Somerset expansion, which is one of my favorites. Uh, it's really good. It's so good with when you play with one of them. It's perfect. It's perfect. Like if you're really, you know, role playing, having, you know, going deep, which the game I think really encourages. And I want to get into that later too, because I think that there's a discussion to be had and maybe it's a broader one and maybe it's a topic for a later day. Um, but this discussion about how to make role playing games more role play again. And I don't just mean everyone's going on on Discord. Yes, hi Lord Filthington. Will will <laughs> thou touch my sword or you know, you know what I mean? Like oh, I don't No, no, stop why. <laughs> you know what I mean though? Like I don't wanna I don't want to be a better way to say that. <laughs> right? So like any other example. <laughs> Anything else. Anything else. I don't know why. I don't know why I use that, but but you know what I mean. And Filthington's a terrible name. But right? It's a really I'm, bad I'm, name. I'm, I'm a Filthington. It's no. everything else I take issue with. And no, you know, I'm I'm not here to tell anybody who's got whatever whatever role play you got going on in your Goldshire slash uh, what's the Final Fantasy has a whole like prostitution district. There's like weird stuff in these games where it's all community driven, right? They're all making their own little MySpace uh, zone. <laughs> What were you but, doing what on MySpace? Oh my not MySpace. What am I, I was I was making people listen to terrible music when they when they entered my page with their animated mouse cursor. Wait, what were you doing? What am I thinking of? It's not MySpace. What what was the virtual uh, uh, world? I don't know. My uh, life. The AOL chat rooms. I don't know. Pick, pick my one. my life. Your your second, second life. life. That's it. Second, second life. life. There it is. That's what my I did. Life. My life. Yeah. God, MySpace and Facebook talk. have joined forces. Is, I, please subscribe to my my face. Thank yeah, you. Subscribe to my face, please. Um, Isn't yeah. that just Instagram? It is now. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it depends if you're a food Instagrammer or a selfie Instagrammer. Because if you're a selfie Instagrammer, then it is my face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if it's if it's food, it's pie face, right? Oh, <laughs> oh look, look what I go. did. You hear what I, see what I did there? That's pretty good. There it is. Um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, but yes, all high elves all the time. They're awesome, and also they're uh, specifically like mechanically, they're they have really great passives and stuff you can unlock on on their on their passive tree. Which and the tree stuff we'll get to in a second because that's where I think maybe the game gets complicated for people. Um, their skill system is a little unwieldy. They've done some things to try to to help that, but boy, when you want to min-max at endgame, you're like, all right, I'm going to go look and see what some builds are for a good stamina-based uh, sorcerer or whatever. And you go look up these these uh, these things you got to do. And it's a list, man. Like, it's like gear, what you have to craft, what you have to quest for, what you have to get dropped from some raid or whatever. Not that unusual in terms of MMOs, if you think about it, but it just feels like a giant list of those things. And then very specific, like, weapon swap, hot bar swappy concepts and and stuff I, I think the game does a great job of letting you explore and kind of make what you want to make or what feels good to you but if you're a min maxer this game's got they've got maxes to min if that makes sense <laughs> uh <laughs> so anyway there's uh there's that uh let's see what else um uh oh i mentioned uh hi oh yeah wood elves and uh, orcs as well of course uh the orcs are kind of humans with with weird teeth they don't really look very orky but that's that's elder scrolls welcome to the elder scrolls uh, uh, ev yeah every elder scrolls game ever has just looked like i don't know like a human got a mask from a halloween store and a that's bit. that's your another that's your new race like everything is so literally humanoid yeah oh yeah uh yeah, yeah. everyone has like uh, the, the posture's too good I need, I need, I need some hunched over. You need some hunching. Yeah, yeah. Every everyone's just walking around like they got a stick where it shouldn't be. Well, let me give you. I got good news for you because the game features. I mean, this may not be enough, but 
the game features uh, these, well, it's part of the appearance stuff, but basically it's um, positions you can, when you're standing idle, what you're doing. So I unlocked one of them because I was doing Dark Brotherhood, or um, not Dark Brotherhood. Yeah. Yeah, I got a Dark Brotherhood one. Yeah, yeah where yeah. you're just like, you're oh, I want to be too cool for anime school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's totally true. There's another one where you're just angry and you're kind of like, and you're clenching your fists and they're sort of shaking. There's one where you're sort of happy and sitting back like this, like everything's great. So they do, they try to liven some of that up. Um, I'm not sure it's always perfect, but uh, the other no, two I'm races. I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot about it. And you're right. I think that does does add a lot to, it helps. to the game. Plus, as long it's more. As, it, some, some of them are a little absurd right. uh, to be the your idle animation but but yeah some are some are i mean they're i like them because it's just more stuff to unlock and i like i like that feeling of checking off stuff and going sweet i got four more of these all right cool um i think mmos are at their best when they let you collect a bunch of stuff even if it's not you know game affecting uh, i i like collecting um the bestial races in the game the khajiit and the aragonians uh the aragonians are basically lizard people this is this is the most non-humanoid the game gets Although body wise, they're still pretty humanoid, but uh, the Khajiit in in general, uh, I remember being super annoyed. I think we talked about this, Joss, on your on your episode of the Gamers In, but I I used to not like them because I was like, wow, cats, dude, freaking, I don't want to be a cat. <laughs> like it's just weird. It's like cat heads sure. on bodies and a tail, yeah. and I don't want to look at a tail all day. And you know, I don't I don't know what it was. Just didn't it wasn't my thing. But the Elsewhere expansion for Elder Scrolls Online completely flipped the script on that for me. I love those guys now. And it's the story um, that they that they told me. It's the characters they introduced around the Khajiit and their home cities and the lore behind it and their ancient weird stuff and uh, the desert they live in is so awesome. Uh, I just uh, now I'm all into it and I want to make like three more cats. So I'm all about the cats now. Cats are great. Um, Let's move on. The race, or we did races. Classes, Dragon Knight, Sorcerer, Nightblade, Templar, Warden, and Necromancer. Dragon Knights are, I don't know, magic and melee uh, at their at their, at their their core, although you can kind of do anything with this game. But Sorcerers are, you know, magic, obviously. Nightblades are very much about sneaking around and stealthing and stabbing you in the back. Uh, high single target damage type stuff. Templars are, for the most part, healers of sorts. Wardens are kind of the only pet class in the game. They, where you have just sort of a permanent pet, it's a bear, and uh, but you can also heal. There's a little bit of tanking going on. There's different stuff you can do there, and then the necromancer, which is the most recent class introduced in the game, which I think that hit with um, that was Somerset, no, elsewhere. I don't remember. Um, that's an interesting class because it is what you think it is. You're raising skeletons. You're chucking you know skulls at people. You got all kinds of dark magic and and stuff. But also everyone hates you. So when you're in cities, if you set off one of your skills in the city, and it warns you about this when you choose them, but if you fire off one of those by accident, you just tap in keys, oops, I sent a skeleton toward a dog or whatever whatever you're doing, The you're, you're toast, man. Every guard in the city will tackle you, take you down, put you in jail. You got to pay a bunch of money to get out. It's like, it's rough. So I guess what I'm saying is be careful, necros. Don't. Don't be, don't be popping off in town, okay? I mean, doing. I accidentally killed a chicken and everyone got pretty mad at me and I was not a necromancer. I think the key <laughs> is to just not murder things you shouldn't murder unless you know what you're getting into. But this is the problem. When you're, <laughs> when you're in a game and you come up on a town like in Skyrim or something and there's a chicken and that's all there is. Everyone else is gone, right? There's just you and a chicken and NPCs <laughs> are off, whatever. Your temptation, because it's a video game, is to go, ooh, can I target that? Oh, I can. What happens if I kill the chicken? No one will care. It's just a chicken. <laughs> and now you're on the wanted list. Now everyone hates you, and you're going to go to jail. They're going to take your stuff and your money. Like It sounds that, like a that, grander like psychological <laughs> question. Like, if no one's around, what do you do to the chicken? <laughs> Right. Oh, I'm a horrible person in video games. I was never the kid that like like sh- shot squirrels with BB guns. I love squirrels. I'm very kind to animals in real life, but but like in in video games, I I murder everything. I can. I, it's like, can I murder it? I just want to know how far I can go in any game. In any <laughs> game, if there's a thing, like we were, the Sims for the we were calling, we were talking about city builders earlier, dude. Like it was like, could I delete a door and just watch this this AI starve? Oh yes, I can. Wow. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just you know it's 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 how it's I a go. It's a video game. But, You're supposed to experiment, but Joss makes a good point. Like, 
you know, if you're <laughs> if you're alone in a desert and no one's around, what do you do to the chicken, right? <laughs> well, am I starving in the desert? Because yeah. it's a desert. Now I might need to eat. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Killing and eating the chicken for sustenance and, uh, you know, honoring the chicken and, and using the whole chicken and, you know, all of those things. <laughs> This is good that you do Bring that. Bringing hat out of the feathers, right? But if oh it's but God. if you're well fed and you got plenty of water and you're coming around a corner and there's a chicken and no one else is around, <laughs> what do you do? And this is how the first McDonald's got started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were lied to. I saw the founder. It was not how. That's not what they told me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that the, yeah. the 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 being the, the always getting a bounty, even if no one is around to see you, like commit shit, like bothers me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's one of those things in this game. Well, I think that only happens if you kill things, right? Because you can like sneak into houses and like steal stuff, and if right. nobody sees you, you can get away yeah. with it. Yeah. As long yeah. as you don't but get it's also, caught with stolen stuff in your right, inventory. Right. That also kind of irritates me. I'm like, well, how would they know it's stolen? Does everybody write their name in their underwear in <laughs> in 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 Merland? Like, what's going on here? Why yeah. do they even know? No, that's a really good point. Though they just become red items in your bag, mm-hmm. and you can't sell yeah, you them. You got to go to the fence and yeah you have to fence yeah. them exactly it's, and some of that's yeah. worth big money though so it's nice it's a nice way to make some cash in the game oh yeah i steal i i, I played a, quite a bit last week and I, I was stealing everything i could find um yeah. but i was also playing nightblade so i was like sneaking around i was getting past guards with with mostly little issue yeah yeah there I mean, was one moment where i wanted and you can pickpocket and they can notice you like they've tried to include that stuff in the game um it's important to note here though that if if what i'm describing to people sounds like your skyrim experience it is scaled back from that um not everything is pick up and put it in your pocket the way it is in skyrim skyrim literally lets you take every block of cheese every pot every anything anywhere laying anywhere and put it in your inventory and become encumbered and then use a cheat code and never have to worry about it again that's how skyrim works this game isn't quite like that the game's got barrels and boxes and bags and stuff that are scattered around the world that have I thought stuff you were about in to them. start singing part of your part of their world <laughs> they're part of their world see i know where that's barrels going. and bags and cheese wheels plenty mm-hmm. <laughs> see that's pretty good um anyway so you can click on that stuff and it'll say oh you got some rice uh, or hey you picked up some other cooking ingredient or uh, some lock picks or whatever and uh use that in some of the crafting in the game so the game tries to replicate some of that. Some of these urns have stuff in them. Some of them don't. Blah, 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 blah. But not everything is lootable. Not everything in the way that Skyrim is, I should say. Um, so they, they try to have Elder Scrolls-like behaviors in the game. In some cases, it is noticeable that they're scaled back or that they're not quite as you know open-worldy uh, as you might want. And I actually think that this worked against the game in the early days. I think I think people are kind of over it now, but... In those early days, all you could do was compare this to a game like Skyrim because that's what came before. Um, what's weird, it was only three years later, three, four years later that we got this after Skyrim. It's, it's nuts to me, but but anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, we got, what, 17 Skyrim re-releases in the interim? Yeah, like, something like that. <laughs> that's a good so, point. Like, they're probably they're, not they're done. Still, we're still getting Skyrim re-releases, but yeah, that that the first time I played it, like, I haven't played a ton of it, but... You know, the first time I played it a couple of years back, I was just like, "Oh wow, this is this is just Elder Scrolls. It's a, it's an Elder Scrolls game. It just happens to be online, which I think is a good or bad thing, depending on your tastes." Yeah. To me, I think it's impressive as hell. Like it's just so different right. from any MMO I've played, um, <laughs> by virtue of being so similar to every Elder Scrolls game I've ever played. Right. And well, and it kind of lets you play on a bit of a spectrum as you can go like all the way into the multiplayer experience or go all the way the other way into the single player experience. Like there is so much questing content that you can spend your time however you want in the game, which is something that like you kind of in any other MMO I've played before it's usually like you you play through the content and then that's kind of it but it's like in elder scrolls it's like you hit max level and there's still like you haven't done 
80 percent of the quest content like there's just there's just so much it's like every corner you come around somebody else has some experience for you yeah. so you can go crazy down that single player route or you can do all of the like big huge arena pvp stuff you can go in and do the raids you can do dungeons like you can do all that multiplayer stuff mm -hmm. but you can and you can choose any kind of combination of that in between it's just it's such a rich single player experience like if you're looking for elder scrolls six like come play eso because this basically is the next elder scrolls yeah but yeah, back in just, time <laughs> it, yeah it's just constantly getting more like yeah. It, yeah it 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 to me like the high point of it is like the narrative elements like the the, the story like every dumb little quest is the like it's not a dumb little quest. That, yeah, <laughs> go back to that clip. Like the voice acting is yeah. amazing. Like it reminds me of like what's so good about The Witcher and why I still haven't beaten The Witcher threes because I keep getting distracted by amazing side quests. Yeah, no, this um, is. Uh, I'm glad you brought and, up that comparison. I would actually say one of the reasons I like ESO so much is it reminds me of the care taken for side questing in something like The Witcher. There's no just fetch it, bring it back, and we're done. That doesn't work that way in this game. Every single quest, including non-main story, non-epic, non-whatever storyline quests, just a guy sitting around. You walk past him and he goes, ah, these darn beetles are running around again or whatever. And you talk to him and you think, oh, he'll have me kill 10 beetles and then give me a reward. It's always more than that. You end up going to some dungeon with that guy, finding out his sister, uh, you know, runs a weird witch coven. And now you got to figure that thing out. Like, it's a... It always goes deeper than you expect. It's always 100% voiced and acted and always goes places you don't expect. And and every time, I, every time I do one of those side quests, I think, well, I'll just knock this one out and then I'll get back on the main train here. No, it doesn't work that way. Like it's always ten meaningful. hours later. Yeah, ten hours. <laughs> and it's not even like a. It's not even like a. I don't know. It doesn't. The game doesn't feel like it's overstays its welcome in those quests. It's just such a different way of approaching the side business that you're used to in an MMO, and all of them handle it slightly different. Um, you know, I was thinking in Guild Wars Two, which I was playing a little bit last night. You know, the game still relies on this sort of walk up to a farm. Oh, it turns out you got to do a bunch of stuff around this farm, and it's more like the world is giving you quests. As you move through it, that's the kind of their way of doing it. Their way here is like, and it's a big commitment. I don't know how they did this to themselves, but they're like, you know what? We're going to make every single quest have a meaningful, impactful story behind it. Every character is going to matter. You're going to have stuff that you talked about months ago that will come up again because you helped somebody with something. And they got a new quest with this new side character that has nothing to do with the grand scheme of things. Like that to me is kind of what's what sets them apart. Well, one hundred percent, it is for me. It's the thing that makes the game special, and it may not be for everybody. Some people just want to click, 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 skip, 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 go do the next thing. And you can skip dial. I mean, you can, you can you know click through these guys. Oh and yeah, you can speak. skip. Yeah, you can skip through everything. Um, I I wouldn't recommend it because everything in it is so thoroughly well written and thought out and voice acted that I feel like skipping through things just makes me really sad when I think of it because I I sit there and almost treat it like I'm gonna go watch an ESO movie or something mm -hmm. like I because I just sit there and I'm like okay like click on this dude now sit back and tell me a story right. <laughs> and I just sit there and and it takes a while like it's definitely not a quick experience if you're trying to get everything out of ESO that they've put in there for you. But um yeah, it's it's I think a more laid back, fun, um immersive experience yeah. than some of the other stuff I've played. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think it's I, I think I get more out of it when I'm ready to to be immersed. Like I if yeah. I'm, I need to you put myself to be in, in that headspace. headspace. Yeah. Yeah. Like like I'm gonna go play a game of D D. Like yeah. yes, like I need yeah. that almost to be that in that exact same headspace when I go to play uh, ESO. Um, obviously, it's less less role-playing on my part, but it really does feel like I'm like sitting there listening to a really bought-in DM mm -hmm. who spent way too much time preparing for this weekend's <laughs> campaign. Yeah. Um, just go off with their crazy voices. Well, with all that said... Basically, it's like hanging out with Kyle. That's what I'm trying to right. say. It's very much like hanging out with Kyle Ferguson right. when I play It's ESO. just being Kyle's friend, really, is what this is like. <laughs> But I okay, but these are these these are really important points to why I think the game succeeds. But also, in some players' cases, I would understand why this feel, would feel like a hindrance or why it would feel like too much. If you're used to, even in a game like Skyrim, let's go back to that. 
if you skipped all those quest dialogues, then you're going to do it here too. Like if you already weren't into that there, you're probably not going to be into it here because this is true to that experience. And it should be. It's an Elder Scrolls game. Um, a lot of people don't know this thing's set, what, 300 years before the events of Skyrim? So we're talking. I think it's more. I thought it was like 800. Was it 800 or a thousand? I always forget. It's it's way way before. It's in the before times. Yeah, it's yeah, way yeah, before. Yeah. It, it only matters if you're really into the lore. It's like yeah, it's yeah. Elder Scrolls is, ass Elder Scrolls. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. oh, yes. Knights of the Old Republic is so long before the events of the Star Wars trilogy. Oh, there's lightsabers and spaceships. Totally. It's totally. What I want. No, that's a perfect. I think it's more game. to like uh, to separate it from the games that they did in the single player space. They're like you know enough time has passed that we're gonna touch on all the characters that you may have read about in those lore books, but we're not going to do things that will impact the events of our single player content. Right. Yeah. And I, uh, I think it's to its, to its strength because what I, okay, Jocelyn, you said it earlier and I just want to reiterate it. I really like feeling like I'm playing a single player MMO experience because right now in my life, it's what I have the most time for. Um, I'd love to be, you know, raiding with a giant group again. I'd love all those things to be real but they just don't fit my schedule. And so I still need that itch scratched. And this scratches at the most, again, for me, because I feel like I'm actually playing a single player game that just happens to have other people in it. Usually it's the other way yeah. around. This is a game with tons of people in it that I can do a little bit of single player in. This is the flip of that. And I don't think a lot of people know that. I think a lot of people are concerned that this leans way too hard into the multiplayer aspects so that the single player part gets watered down. And I'm here to tell you, I think it is the opposite of, of that impression. The game really takes this part of it seriously. And that makes me happy because that's what I like to play. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was, uh, oh, you can pay 15 bucks a month for the game if you want to. Uh, it's called ESO Plus. It's not required to play the game. Basically, they do it like, um, well, there are other MMOs that do this, but you know, you you buy a game for you buy your expansion or your con or your original content for forty nine bucks, and then you have the game and you play it as much as you want. And if you want, you have a store to get cosmetics and some other stuff. Think Path of Exile or you know other free to play games. Even this is the model that they're going for. But ESO Plus gets you some stuff, and I do it because I really like the stuff I get. You get faster XP. I do it, and then yeah. I forget about it, and then I end up with an ESO Plus subscription for like a year when I'm not actually playing, yeah. and then I come back to the game, and because it gives you like the monthly like chunk of their currency, I end up with like two hundred dollars worth of currency every time I come back, yeah. and I'm like, oh damn, now I can buy all the cool mounts. Yeah, they love it when you come back. It only costs you. Yeah, you don't think about that game. You don't point that out. Well, <laughs> you just point out about this big giant pile of coins i have every time i come back to eso right because this because she's talking about the you're talking about the the in or sorry the the eso plus store currency which yeah the store is currency really yeah. valuable because as it turns out that's how you get all of the different mount types that you don't get through questing um so if you want to get a limited time mount this is how you're going to get it if you're going to get into the housing system in the game which we haven't even touched on the housing system is massive and crazy because you can buy castles like stuff that's too big for a hundred people to live in and fill it full of furniture that you've either crafted, bought, discovered, whatever. Um, and those yeah, things you can literally just go in, live a simple life, buy a house and be a carpenter yeah. and just run around and collect wood and yeah. just craft tables. Yeah. And that could be your ESO experience yeah. if you want. Yeah. And you've got your own instanced house where you can have all your parties. That's where the role play is probably mm -hmm. happening is somebody's, yes. you know, they bought a mansion. <laughs> somebody's house. Yeah. We're just not cool enough to get the invites yet. Yeah. Well, hold on. I mean, Scott seems very knowledgeable about this, this creepy role play <laughs> stuff that's happening. So well, let just... me just, let me put it this way. I have a palatial uh, escape home on the in northern elsewhere that is gigantic and sometimes friends come over that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> that's it why did you make it sound so weird i don't know because <laughs> that's how i do things i make everything sometimes sound weird friends come over sometimes they come <laughs> over um but it's beautiful and sometimes you're gonna pay like 50 grand for some of these things and, and when i say grand i mean the the in the in-store currency which you can buy with real money or like jocelyn said it accumulates every month you get 1600 or something for free uh, as part of the uh, uh of the plus sub yeah as far as part, part yeah. of the your uh, sub there's a whole other aspect to the game that's actually leaving soon or being altered uh where you there it's a loot box system that's like a kind of a separate third tier thing with the purchase of the 
game or the purchase of Bethesda and Zenimax by Microsoft earlier this year, something about Microsoft's deal with international something government, I don't know what. I, don't, I wish I knew all the proper terms for this, but basically they can't do loot boxes anymore because of some agreement that was made somewhere in the world somewhere. So Microsoft's, uh, so they've announced basically they have to take that out and and replace it with a different way of doing it. Um, so I actually think that's a good idea because I hate loot boxes. But Yeah, um, I hate the crates. I mean, like I get good stuff out of them, so I buy them because also I'm a Hearthstone player, so it's something I'm used to. Because right. <laughs> like, it, it literally works just like Hearthstone cards. Like they have a chance to roll legendary or, well, Orange. What I don't even know if it's called legendary in ESO, but yeah. I and love it, that you just assume sober. it's called legendary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're like purple and blue and and yeah, yeah it's like, the same and thing. Orange is yeah. the good one. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're all they're all color coded like your Diablo. Loot, yeah, basically, it works kind of the same. But what I love about that is, is a Khajiit guy, Cat, cat Man, sits down and goes, "Ah, this one is hoping you will win the thing. You are great. What are you doing here?" Like he's, I love those guys. They can do right? no wrong. <laughs> They're so freaking great. Every time they say this, they one immerse thing. you in everything. Yeah. Like even the opening the loot boxes, they're like, "Well, hello, <laughs> <laughs> welcome." Yeah, and I didn't say we didn't say this yet, but I think I'm of the personal opinion that the people like John are going to hate me saying this because he loves the music in Final Fantasy. Other people like whatever they like, but I think the best music, certainly in MMOs, maybe in gaming right now, is Brad Derrick and his soundtracks for the ESO games. They're incredibly epic really true to some like original throwback uh you know stuff that you'd hear in early elder, elder scrolls games all the way back to one back to arena but just amazing arrangements of those and original music the zone music is incredible the music is beautiful i play this stuff all the time just to hear it and it's all on spotify apple music everybody has you know all these albums and every every uh expansion gets released with its soundtrack and they're amazing just amazing stuff and it adds to this whole thing again you're just like oh the minute i walk into i don't know vivex freaking uh, uh pyramid castle thing in um morrowind it's just overwhelms you that music's like oh, i'm home again like there's just something about all of that stuff that immerses me in it in a way that other mmos don't and that isn't to say that if you're really into final fantasy 14 and that music they got on there really does it for you uh great I have no 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 qualms with that, um, but if you if you like me are just a, addicted to the texture of Western MMOs, meaning sort of the European King Arthur motif that we're all sort of used to, the Lord of the Rings vibe, that that kind of fantasy, this game just covers you in it like a warm blanket, and you feel like you're in it. Now I think it's important to to say. For some people, that is not going to do it. Garrett mentioned it's not the kind of game you can just, you know, watch the football game while you play the game or else you're going to lose out because you're not paying attention. I mean, attention. yeah, you, you can if all you're in for it is the grind. But, like, what's, to me, what's so impressive about the game is, is how much care and, and effort is put into the, the story elements and the voice acting and the music and all of that. Because, um, you know, we've, we've talked about visually, it's it's a little janky. It's mm -hmm. It's... It's a Bethesda game. Like sure. you kind of know what you're getting into, right? Um, visually speaking, but like where it it really is a cut above. I think everything else out there is with the the audio of the game. Yeah, like everything about it: the music, the voice acting, the sound effects, everything. Yeah, for me, if it's weak, it's character animation and movement, and maybe even combat feels a little stiff. Um, where it's strong visually is architecturally, cinematically, sort of world buildy. Um, underground cave with a giant temple in it looks incredible in this game like it just is awe-inspiring to me to see that stuff some of the early zones a little sparse um you know from 2014 but that's to be expected with a game that evolves over time um but yeah it's not a perfect bag but all all in all it's the one mmo where i feel like i'm not just moving a little cartoon around i feel like i'm in a world and the world is all around me and the mix of sound and visuals and music and characterization just put me in a place that I can't match somewhere else. So even though I, I, I know it has its problems and it has its, its loose ends, it's the one place I just feel comfort, comfortable going back to. Even if I take a long break, 
<laughs> like Jocelyn with her per, with her uh, fifteen dollar a month uh, c- Canadian payment, which is more like twenty something. Um, how, actually, how's that work up there? Does it cost more for the monthly things? Because I know games in general are just more Canadian dollars, but how about just like a sub? Oh yeah, the subs are like whatever your U.S. price is, but then converted to to our currency. And okay. there are there are some places now. Like I'm not sure if it's like legislative, and this is probably a whole other like tangent we don't necessarily want to go down. But um, like a lot of things have started to like Twitch subs included, and um, a lot of different games have started like localizing currency. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a business decision or if it's a like, cause I like paying things in us dollars cause I get us dollars from doing tax. So right. it's really nice. I just keep all that in my PayPal and I don't have to worry about like currency conversions and stuff. But, um, yeah, whatever the I reason is, a lot that. of things I... have, have localized. So mm-hmm. then I pay much more. <laughs> I'm sorry, can we just shift this into gaming conversion rates, the podcast? Because now I'm fascinated by the fact that you can just like leave the money that comes in from the Angry Chicken in your PayPal and it just stays as U.S. currency. Oh, yeah. that's crazy. And then I could just pay in U.S. currency and it was great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't they made it that. so I can't do that now <laughs> I was say in that a lot of cases. It feels, it feels like a bit of a loophole and maybe they're plugging it, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why any of it's any like we got to get to a place. Maybe maybe crypto is is, is trying to do this. We got to get to a place where we're all just on the same page, man. It's just the same. It's a one big world. We all got COVID now anyway. Let's just go ahead and do our money together. <laughs> Let's share our money, too. Yeah, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's make this happen. It's it's no longer like a five month trip on a boat with dysentery to get anywhere. You know what I mean? Like we don't live there anymore. It's, You're right. We have we have a completely different disease we need to worry about instead yeah. of dysentery. <laughs> Right. One that we arguably wouldn't have if it wasn't for, uh, you know, the, the world being so small now. But, I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's multiple quests that had I played a, a few years ago in ESO where they're like, a terrible d- d- disease has scattered the land. If only people would quarantine and be well, going, yeah. oh, that's so unrealistic. You know, uh, these video, <laughs> these MMOs love that kind of story. In fact, there's, I got some other audio here of somebody getting interrogated and it was during a plague storyline. I'll, I'll just play that real, real quick here. Please, I've told you everything I know. One more lie, and I make you stop talking permanently. Understand? Now, those at home who are hearing that in stereo, we may be too here, um, you can hear it shifting left and right. It's the other thing I like about the game, and most MMOs do this, but the game's really good with spatial audio. So when I walk in a room and the lady's over here talking, I hear her in the left ear. And if dude over here is saying something, I hear him more central or to the right. Um, I don't know why that matters to me, but I like it. I feel like I'm in it to win it when that happens and oh the game lets you play in first person um because you know elder scrolls people demand it but you you know by default you're kind of pulled out a little bit with the camera um i go back and forth you just hit the v key sometimes you want to be like first person it's cool but i think combat's better third and i want to zoom way out when i'm doing a big you know raid boss or a world event and uh it lets you choose so that's a fun i'm thing. almost never in first person yeah it's rare ever it's the opposite of Skyrim in that it had a third person mode, but it sucked. He floated. I, I used it. I still used it a lot. Did you? I like oh. seeing my character in these games, but so yes, bad. I agree. Yeah. Uh, maybe better in Skyrim, but I don't know if you remember Oblivion is terrible. You were a floaty nightmare in that thing. It was bad. I'm, I, 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 have we gotten into this? Kyle's heard me rant a ton of times. I hated Bethesda games until Skyrim. <laughs> like every single one. I was like, why do people like these games? They look like butt. They play like butt. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't get butt. it. I, 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 I like, I have more respect for it now is I, I, I didn't play role-playing game like i never played pen and paper role-playing games until like my mid-20s yeah um and so i didn't really just have a head for kind of letting my kind of imagination enhance kind of standard fantasy for me yeah um but then skyrim came out and i had you know played some pen and paper and loved it absolutely loved it but before that i was just like ah this is just like ooh, do they do they have an art director because mm-hmm. it kind of looks like oh we need skeletons what does a skeleton look like i don't know i got this skeleton off of google images that's what we put in the game sure like there's no intelligent design behind the way things look sure um and it used to really bother me and i've i've, I've come around on it although i still can see i still think fallout is the ugliest game ever made <laughs> oh man look at you fallout which fallout which one all of them all of them okay <laughs> fallout has 
it, the most offensive art direction for me. It so, is just so. You don't mean that. Oh, it's I a don't dirty... know. We're wearing jumpsuits, and this is what <laughs> rust looks like. The whole game looks like jumpsuit <laughs> rust. All right, but well, uh, fair enough. I, I think that's a fair point. I love the world of Fallout, but I love it because I love you know post apocalyptic whatever. You're not I necessarily played, saying uh, four. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever the last one was, that wasn't the online nightmare. Um, so I really so enjoyed sense. it. I had a great time with it. But like, like growing up, I was like, oh my god, could you guys try and design something as opposed to just making it literally what that thing is? I think the games have always their strengths have been depth and not that front end stuff. I don't think you're wrong about any of that. I I, I will say that yeah. I think ESO c- corrects a lot of that. Um, but it's still one of those. Like you're not gonna miss. You're not gonna mistake this for some other game. You're gonna get in and go. Oh yeah, look at that. Like there's a there's a bar up top that tells me where all my shit is to go to, and one of them's this quest little marker. All right, I'll go that direction. And when you talk to a dude and take the new quest, the little sound goes dung dung and makes the and makes the noise. And you know, like it's 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 very much trying to be one of those things. But I think that this is the best iteration of the game. And this I get a lot of heat for this because there are people that revere Skyrim. Just revere it, and they should. It's, it's a an very amazing, good game. It's an amazing game. Like it's a, it's an, it's an, not only amazing. It's one of the most influential, most longstanding, most reproduced things. Okay, I get it. But I think, I think my favorite game is ESO because ESO continues to grow and gets added on to. And for what I loved Skyrim for, I'm getting it over here, mostly in a single player type experience, and multiplayer if I want it, and I really like it. By the way, I haven't mentioned this, but when you hit level 50, you get kind of a, uh, I don't know what to compare it to, maybe Paragon and Diablo, kind of a Paragon system. Um, they are ter- they are shit poor at advertising this, by the way, because it seems like, <laughs> on the on the surface, it seems like, okay, you play ESO, you hit level 50, and then what, raid, PvP, your usual, like that's the, that's the impression a lot of people have, I had. Um, but when you do max a character, suddenly you open up these skill trees and passives and opportunities to take your character in all different kinds of new ways in very much that Paragon style. So now when you're doing content and you're not actually getting levels for it, you are still sort of getting levels for it, like Diablo Paragon works. And that was a lovely surprise, but terribly advertised. They don't good, do a good job of explaining that, so I wish they'd do better. Uh, anyway... Uh, what else can we say about this thing? Um, the game today, start anywhere, do anything you want, and at any level. Um, the skill system is a mixed bag for a lot of people. I think it's fine, but it's just kind of all over the place. I mean, literally, the minute you pick up a a sword, you could be a wizard, or a, sorry, a sorcerer, pick up a sword, and now you've got a sword skill tree, a one-handed sword skill, skill tree. You pick up a two-handed sword, now you have a two-handed sword skill tree that you can add points to if you want to. And it goes every weapon uh, all across the board. Everybody can use anything they want. But obviously some are going to benefit people better for their classes than they would otherwise. But, you know, I've Same got for a, armor types as well. It's say, as soon you know, as you wear something or do something, then all of a sudden you have a skill tree for it. <laughs> right. If you exactly if you if you're doing light armor because you're mostly, you know, a clothy mage type, uh, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of skills and passives you can unlock for for wearing that armor and it's and some of that stuff's really powerful um but even like well like i mentioned earlier your your race has a bunch of stuff you can unlock um your class has three whole categories of class systems to unlock and then you choose which one you want um there's across it's just it, it's it's actually really kind of complex in a way that i think may be off putting at first but I like it because I feel like I can just make whatever the frick I want. Just make whatever I want. Anytime I mm-hmm. want, be whatever I want. And there is a respec system. It's expensive. Um, sometimes you can get tokens that will be free to let you do a respec for free. Sometimes if you've been away for a while, you got to respec anyway because the game did a patch or whatever and they had a, gave everyone a free respec. But if you want a respec, you got to go to town, pray to a freaking temple thing, and pay a <laughs> shit ton of gold <laughs> to get it done. But I guess by then you have a lot of gold. Um, anyway, I, I I think the game probably peaked or is is has been it's just it's been as good, but it really peaked at elsewhere. Elsewhere is an amazing expansion for a lot of reasons. The world event uh, dragons are still really fun to do, and they still drop great loot. Even if you're max level, you're still going to get increased loot and stuff by going and doing those world events. 
Um, of course, there is PvP and raid. I've done some battlegrounds. They are frantic, and I'm bad. So there's that. <laughs> Have you done much of that, um, Jocelyn? No, I haven't touched PvP because I'm so scared because... <laughs> There are so many skill trees that I'm like, I am definitely not pushing the right buttons, let alone in the right order. Yeah. I'm just I'm just doing my own Dragon Knight thing mm -hmm. and I am just yelling and jumping and stabbing and it's great. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not I'm definitely not doing the right things to be engaging with other people who know what they're doing yeah. at all. Yeah. As you, <laughs> I know my limits. That yeah. is one. <laughs> As usual, there is a skill cap going on here that is, you know people who just do this all day and they're all really good and they know exactly how to build out their characters and what gear to have and all of that and i'm just in there hurling fireballs hoping for a kill and right? it's fun <laughs> it's fun it's basically uh cap point capture type gameplay for these for these battlegrounds but um you know they're all right and there's good rewards if you do them and occasionally and they've got an lfg type system where you just you know queue for dungeons if you want or you can manually do it with your friends or whatever so they've got all those features uh, a very robust um, cause or not cosplay. What am I trying to say? Uh, transmog, <laughs> transmog. Transmog. There we go. So if you want to have tons of different outfits, stuff based on all the gear you found, uh, costumes, co recolor everything. They have a dye system that's super comprehensive. Um, you go to a dye station or whatever it's called. I forget what they call it. But basically, you can just dye your stuff whatever colors you've unlocked and any combination you want. I made a, the craziest pink, stupid looking dragon armor the other day like you can just go nuts in there so they're they're really into customization and stuff and that's that's a big deal for a lot of players um their most recent expansion the blackwood expansion introduced a bunch of, well it's basically a, a focus on like the oblivion stuff so you know this world's version of hell and it's devil uh they go all into that and uh they added companions so now i can roll around with a healer or a fighter or a caster or whatever you can kind of build them out how you want there's a lady and a dude so you can choose which one or have both in your collection and pop one out whatever you want you can gear them um you can help choose what specs they use as they level up because they level up now too i was but, gonna say yeah they can level and do skills and stuff as well right mm -hmm. like they're just there's trees everywhere in this game <laughs> there's a lot oh i found an this is funny so the game by default has them on medium chatty which basically means how much they're going to talk while you're running around with them and mm -hmm. That would be enough for like, oh, I'd find a log and chop it for whatever. And he'd go, well, this is a nice place for gathering, he'd say, or something. <laughs> and then later on, he might say, we'd kill a bunch of things. And he'd go, and that's that, or something like that. Well, I found this slider. You can turn him, you can shut him up entirely. So he just doesn't say anything. Keep it on medium or crank it to high. And that guy is, gr <laughs> he's great. Because every two feet, he's like, well, look at the weather we're having, or hey, this grass is weird, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. I really like that guy. He's a total dope. I like the way you swing your sword. <laughs> <laughs> and there, May I touch it, yeah, sir? Yeah, can I touch your sword? <laughs> <laughs> it's a throwback but he but he's he's awesome and he actually works he gets the job done like he's he's a damage dealer for me and does real work like stuff's faster to kill and it's not just for show it's it actually is useful um you can't take him into pvp though it sucks because i really wish he could run around with me in there but they don't do that um anyway uh, blood sport my favorite <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know we we've, we've explained the game pretty well um Again, I think, I think just this the making this a good option for a lot of players. If you're hearing this going, well, you know, I've played WoW forever and I need a change, or, or I love the Elder Scrolls games and I didn't realize this was a, adhered so closely to that template, or whatever your reasons are for maybe checking it out, it's a pretty low barrier to entry. They're on sale all the time for like the core package on, uh, on Steam and you know also on their own store. Um, so getting in there and trying it is no big deal. Again, there's no mandatory sub, so you don't have to get stuck with some kind of contract or forgetting to unsub or whatever, unless you're like Jocelyn and I and just do it and forget to unsub, but we did it on purpose. That happens. Um, but, uh, you know, there's there's very little barrier to entry, I think. If it was a free-to-play game, that'd be even less of a barrier, obviously. You'd get right in there. But uh, I think the game is worth it, and I think... Uh, you know the the thirty nine bucks or whatever it is for the core game not on sale is is totally worth the price of entry. Um, Garrett, you've played around with it enough to know whether you want to more. Like, is it does it feel like a kind of game that you'd be like, you know what, I think I could get into this. 
more uh, than you are. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's always more just a how much time I have kind of a thing. It's like if I could invent like MMO day where I had a day where I could, all I had to do was play an MMO. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is definitely a game I could see myself getting lost in. In fact, I think um, we've had the conversation where you were like, well, if it was this or Final Fantasy, which way would you go? And you're like, oh, this 100%. Yeah. yeah. I also got back into Final Fantasy last week just to like, maybe, maybe I didn't give, I don't like it. I don't like Final Fantasy. Yeah. It's, I don't. Uh, I've had the same. Problem. I forgot how many damn load, load like walls there are in that game. Yeah. What, what was it made in ninety eight? <laughs> Why are there so many load walls? Jesus. Yeah, there's a lot of load walls. Uh, oh my god, I completely forgot about that part of it. Like, I was like, less, all right, I'll yeah. go make a new character to see how it is, and I'm getting in. I'm like, I'll, I'll say this about Final Fantasy: it is yeah. charming as hell. Sure. Like here's here's your first. Your I played one hour Final Fantasy review. That drunk dude on the cart with you. I love that guy. He's yeah. great. He's your best friend. Forever. Uh, yep. It is like, it remi- it's like a charming in a way that like reminds me of like Ocarina of Time, like, like reading the text chat and like, oh, these characters are so quirky and fun. I love them. They just yeah. ooze charm. Yeah. Um, but I don't, don't like playing that game. Um, like it's not I can't, it doesn't stick with me either. I don't know what my, my deal is, but again, I think I just prefer the Western style. Uh, you know, it's no offense to anything that's sort of. A I'm sorry, warm. I'm sorry. Didn't you max out in that weird Chinese MMO that you played? Yeah, but see, now that's <laughs> that. That's really you can I, literally a, get a giant baby panda mount. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's you, bigger you, than a full size panda, but it's still a baby panda. I was gonna say, wait, <laughs> if it's a giant baby, wouldn't it just? Be oh, a it is a baby panda, just like you. You hit Control T in Photoshop yeah. and stretched it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think okay to answer your question, sword uh, swords of legends, which is a terrible name, I know. Uh, it's got a great acronym though. Solo it sounds like a sponsor for a game you don't actually play. <laughs> no, it sounds like that's a, what it sounds like. John, this podcast brought to you by Swords of Legends. John, John Use Jagger. the code instance to get forty space bucks. There you go. Uh, but John Jagger from Core put it pretty well. He says it just sounds like a, a mobile game name generator, um, and he's and he's right. <laughs> it kind of does, but. The game itself is based on actual Chinese mythology, and it is also based on some other very popular literature over there. I don't know enough about it, obviously, and I'm not culturally connected to it. But the it's very it feels like you're just crouching tiger, hidden dragon kind of vibe, and the music too is like very traditional Chinese um, music, and it's got a very ancient quality to it. So I guess I guess them leaning into that. Is what's working for me. Final Fantasy is kind of all over the place. Like thematically, uh, there's swords, but there's guns. Uh, my mount's a chocobo, but that guy's driving a car from Final Fantasy 15. Weird, you know. <laughs> so like, there's a lot of that going on in that because it's more of a theme park, I would say, and that's okay. And there's no complaints about that. But it's it's very anime theme park, and that's not necessarily where I want to hang um, as much. Whereas, and I had a lot of fun in it, don't get me wrong. And I'm, you know, like I said, I'm currently subbed because I'm fiddling some stuff in there. But, but for me, give me dark, give me dragons, uh, give me that which I desire. Or that sounds I like was just about to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there's, something, there's something to be said for, for taste, obviously. And we're, that's, that's all we're really talking here uh, about. Um, one final note I wanted to mention I really like my portable uh, bank cat. Uh, it's a little. It's a literal cat, and uh, he's my bank, or she is. I think it's a she. And you click on the cat, and he goes, or he or she goes. All right, you want to take a look at what's in your bank, and then I can deposit shit in my bank because I got a cat who's the bank, so that's cool. And then I got a lady I can bring up who will buy all my uh, junk. So if I'm overburdened and I'm in the middle of a fight or whatever, I just hit Q. Whoop, she pops up. What can I do for you? And she doesn't even you seem can to be eat bothered. this cheese wheel. Yeah. She, <laughs> You can eat this cheese wheel. Eat it now. And she doesn't even complain about like 15 demons and dead bodies and all the shit everywhere. She just <laughs> she just wants to me to buy. She just wants to buy my shit. Sounds like a pawn shop in Florida. Kind of. <laughs> it's a good comparison. <laughs> uh, anyway, any any final thoughts on uh, on on ESO from anybody here? It's good. It's good. It's a good game. It's good. Yeah. There's some Elder Scrolls ass Elder Scrolls. Also, I want Bank Cat. Yeah, I Bank Cat is bank great. Cat. Bank Cat was cheap too. It was is on it, sale. Is it, was... it Bank Cat or is it Bank Khajiit? Is oh. it like 
No, it's not a full. It's an actual kitty. It's not a, okay, it's a it's a kitten. Okay. Yeah, but it's <laughs> that a ta- makes it so much better. <laughs> it's a it's a little talking kitty, and the kitty's got like a turban. It's like a little. <laughs> you got to see it. I was gonna say I did not know about Bank Cat. Yeah, <laughs> I've been so, missing out. Somehow Sounds like admit- the the ravings of a lunatic. <laughs> Some, some a little talking cat. And he has a turban. It's great. It's pretty good. Some for some reason he fits in. I don't I know how he does. Stuff in him. Yeah, but he's also he's a lot like if you've done any questing in the the uh, elsewhere stuff. There's a there's like one of their revered leaders is an actual cat, like a little cat that talks, and there's a lot of that in there. But they do it in such a way it all feels fine. The cat people rock, man. <laughs> They're great. It all feels fine. It all feels fine. <laughs> All right, let's see. You guys, I promise, it feels fine. Oh, I, I forgot. I captured some audio of Peter Stormare because I love him. Uh, for those who are like, wait, how do I know that name? You've seen him in every movie almost ever made. Uh, he was the devil in Constantine. He was uh, the guy that put Steve Buscemi in the tri- Oh, in the I love tri- that guy. Chipper. He's the best part of Armageddon. He's the best part of Armageddon up in space, hanging out by himself, <laughs> being all stinky. Uh, he got killed by dinosaurs in the second uh, Jurassic Park movie. got eaten by the little ones. Anyway... He's in this, and he's great. Listen to this. You would use Daedric magic to kill me? That's the very magic that harmed me. You don't need to do this. I fought an army that claimed to be invincible and emerged victorious. Phil Gore's poison won't stop me. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That was after. That was a really long way to say I was born of this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he got. He had a bad deal happen to him in that game, but. It's a fun storyline. And then John Cleese, of course. There's a little short one. Fun little jaunt, actually, full of traps and corpses and nasty beasties filling up the bits in between. He's great. Plays Caldwell. Great character. He's there in vanilla, and then all through the game, you deal with him in different ways. He's he's great. Wears a, wears a pot on his head instead of a <laughs> instead of a helmet and uh, has a spoon ladle for a sword, and he, he's lost his mind. He's fantastic. John Cleese could read from a corporate directory, and I would still smile. <laughs> Yep. So there you go. Our deeper dive into what Elder Scrolls Online might be uh, for you out there. So let us know what you think. Time for a couple of quick emails. Hello there. Here's one from JFL who wrote in uh, to the instance at gmail.com. That's the instance at gmail.com. Says, hello, Scott and crew. I thought I would drop you a line to tell you that your conversation with Jules was very inspiring. I'm very thankful to Jules for pointing out that not having a female perspective in previous episodes was a missed opportunity. I thought it was great uh, that you invited her, and I'm grateful for her perspective. She clearly is a great friend, and you are lucky to have her. As I listened to your conversation, I reflected on what I was doing in my own personal life to make my team more inclusive and where my blind spots might be. Like you, I want to be part of the change. At the end of the podcast, you both hoped this conversation would make a difference in some way, so I thought I would write you and let you know that it did help me and motivated me to do more and listen more. I'm grateful for that. Keep up the work, JFL. Well, thank you, JFL. I appreciate that. Uh, Jules was awesome on that episode, and I'm really glad she took the time to uh, come talk to us. If you haven't heard it yet, you can go back and listen. A couple episodes ago, not too far away. Go check it out. Um, Also one from Adam, a.k.a. El Bacho. El Bacho. He says, (laughs) uh, Hello, I listened to your instance show where Garrett and Scott uh, talked about the changes to the show. And this, by the way, for, for some who were a little confused in the chat room, we talked about these changes like, what? a month before the blizzard stuff happened it it feels like 10 years ago but yeah Yeah. and i've said before like i'm really glad we did i think the show would have ended the week of the blizzard stuff it may have ended had we not already decided we were going to change things up so so this is all i would have i would have pitched my make scott listen to nothing but uh unfiltered mark hoppus lyrics (laughs) podcast. (laughs) any chance i get um anyway uh where is it oh he says i just wanted to thank you I felt like I just got permission to play other MMOs and games. I know this sounds silly, but I've been a listener since around the time Andrew left, and the instance was the only diehard connection back to WoW. Uh, When you said you were going to move one frame back, and it resonated with me, and I started thinking about all the MMO slash grindy games I want to play, but WoW loyalty got in the way. I'm excited to see or to say I'm jumping into uh, Final Fantasy XIV and have started playing some Red Dead Redemption 2, including a few online versions. I'm not quitting WoW, but I'm not going to play the grind after I complete the current patch story. Thank you both. Adam, a.k.a. El Bacho. Uh, yeah, that was just an interesting take. Um, it's weird. I, I have to admit, I'll just be honest here. I felt a similar feeling when all this happened. And by that, I mean, 
once you felt like your loyalties had been uh, slapped a little, like it wasn't equal the other direction, <laughs> you sudden, I suddenly went, oh, well then fine. I'm going to talk about other stuff and I'm not going to feel bad about it. Like I'm not, I'm going to do it without any remorse. Otherwise it would have felt like, oh, this game I'm so devoted to, it's all I ever wanted to talk about before, but now I can't and now it feels weird. And it it's almost like, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I don't want any of this to have happened what happened, but it did kind of give me permission to say, fine, we're, we're, you know, we're going to move away a little bit. So I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that, but uh, I did have that feeling a little like El Bacho. Yeah, things change. There you go. Things change. It's a long time to be talking about the same damn thing. Well, that's, Mm -hmm. that's the other thing, right? Like 15 years. It's a long time. And like we said, we already talked about this before all this stuff went down. But part of me was like, well, now that this has happened, I feel even better about the decision. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And um, well, yeah, it's almost like an old friend, right? When you've been doing something and playing something and, you know, involved in a universe for so long, it's like you feel bad and you feel like that connection and turning around and walking away from that is very, very difficult to do. Right. So I think it, it was uh, like like you say, it's it's terrible that all of this stuff happened, but I'm really glad that it's all out in the open now and people are talking about it. And I'm also really glad that it's allowing not only content cl- content creators, but I think players as well. It is giving kind of permission to to break that connection and to explore other gaming avenues. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if anything, it was probably a really bad relationship that we all had with Blizzard and with WoW specifically of, you know, taking up so much time and and the diehard devotion. Like there's a lot out there. And I think now we've just kind of given ourselves permission to explore a larger gaming world. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's so many experiences out there to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's not and it doesn't take away from the legacy of WoW or its influence. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly the influence can be seen every day. Almost everything we've talked about that influence is, is, you know, is apparent. Does this MMO, the one we talked about today, does it even exist without it? The Final Fantasy game director says there would be no Final Fantasy fourteen without World of Warcraft. Like, there's literally, you know, there's a paper, there's a paper slash crumb trail back to WoW and almost all these things. And it's okay to acknowledge that and to respect, you know, what it did to the industry. But it's okay to, like, you know, pull your hat back a little bit and look further. And that's what we're doing. So take that, world. All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Uh, Jocelyn, what a pleasure it's been to have you here today. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. It was really fun. Yeah. I mean, I'll talk about ESO all day, every day. <laughs> like, I really, as, as we just talk about not like <laughs> devoting yeah. to one game, I'm know. like, yes, all day, every day, ESO, let's go. But yeah, I do really enjoy my time in there. So yeah, I love talking about it. it and such a and w- trying to convert people and let them know it's changed. Because I think a lot of people started it like day one and bounced off and haven't come back and... It's changed a lot in really good ways. I agree. Well, um, uh, I hope to have uh, I hope to have you on again and soon and more. Um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but there's uh, <laughs> there's maybe some cool stuff coming. Everybody, we'll we'll keep you yeah. on the, the edge of your seats here for a minute. Uh, Garrett, anything uh, you want to? Oh I've, no, before I forget, Jocelyn, your other shows. So the Gamers End's amazing. Uh, of course, Angry Chicken's amazing. Uh, anything you want to mention about either of those or anything else you got going on right now and where people can find it. Uh, so you can also follow me over on Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays over on Twitch. But uh, I did want to mention the Gamers In episode. I did go and find it. I put the link in the show notes. It's uh, episode 472 where Scott and I sat down and talked about ESO a couple months ago. So if you are interested in even more ESO talk, uh, we did it over there on uh, episode 472 of Gamers In. Yeah, and we gushed. I remember. Oh, so much. Yeah. <laughs> I gushed. I gushed on that game so hard that day. And I remember it was weird. Like when I hung up with you, I... That's all I wanted to do was go play. And I had like right? other important shit to do. I had things to do. And I was like, I got to do all these things. But then I could play that. And so I think I may, be, I think I may, I may have done that uh, for, a, for a while longer than I should have. Uh, well, anyway, thank you again. Uh, Garrett, anything going on in your world you'd like to mention? Oh, there's always things going on. You can find everything I do over at amove.tv. Uh, just put up a brand new episode of Into the Nexus last night. So you can go listen to Kyle and myself talk about Heroes of the Storm. Um, and we also announced that we're going to be uh, covering news at the moment of Blizzard Variety as we continue to report on the lawsuit. 
um, breaking it off into its own, you know, shows. It's going to be an extra upload every week. Oh, that's great. Covering yeah. updates on that because it is just a continuing story. Um, yeah, it ain't over we're going to be doing there, and it'll be its own video on YouTube as well. So, uh, nice. yeah, check out Into the Nexus. Yeah, very cool. I uh, was going to bring it up today, but didn't. But the uh, uh, the the people who have been let go on the Diablo team came as a bit of a surprise. But uh, I don't think we're done. I think there's still more stuff, and it'll keep happening. And I yeah, do want to say, well, considering leadership is ignoring the four very specific and reasonable demands of the employees, um, yeah, yeah, I think there's still quite a lot to be done. I think a lot will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not done with the story. Also, uh, just as a side note, I said this on Core. I'll say it again. I just want to give props to the hardworking men and women who came through and actually made those Diablo 2 cinematics look so amazing. I cannot believe how good those look compared to the old stuff. I didn't think that was going to happen. Garrett, we've had long conversations about whether they would deliver on that promise or not. So just to pull back the shroud a little bit, get past the ugly uh, part of Blizzard and get down to the hardworking people that are still just trying to keep their jobs and make it happen, those cinematics look insane. I can't believe they pulled that off. Anyway, total side note. Uh, that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for being here. Send us those emails, the instance at gmail.com. We're not quite ready for the uh, Patreon shift, but we're getting there. Uh, for now, you can support us over at theinstance.net. Sign up and become a supporter at the Instance Plus program. Uh, when that changes, we'll make sure you know, and it, it'll all be super simple, but uh, there's a little bit of work to be done there. So watch for that. You can find more stuff like this at frogpants.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instance Show for the show. Me, it's Scott Johnson, Garrett Art, and of course, Joss Plays. And you can find more stuff like this right over there at Frog Pants. Like I said, that's going to do it for us, for me, for Joss, for Garrett. And we'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Well done, everyone. Well done. We did it. We did it. Yeah.